These beautiful orange streams are toxic, polluted by acid drainage from coal mines. If this pollution can be captured at the source, though, life can be brought back to these streams. Our team of engineers and artists is working to restore these streams and in the process to turn this pollution into art. Over the last 100 years or so, Southeast Ohio has been extensively mined for coal. Many of these old mines were not sealed properly, and consequently they fill with water that reacts with the exposed minerals, forming sulfuric acid and high levels of iron. When that acid water and iron drains out of the mines, they enter streams, killing them and all of the biological life in them. Our team travels to some of the worst acid mine drainage seeps in the region to find a way to save these streams. Deceptively, as the acid mine drainage comes out of the mine, it's clear because the iron is still dissolved and in a reduced form. We collect this water and take it back to the lab where we will test the process to turn this iron into pigment. The collected water goes into our testing apparatus where we can control things like temperature and pH. Our first step in cleaning the water is to neutralize the pH. We do this by adding a base, which initially turns the water green because of a reaction with the reduced iron called hydrolysis. Next, to remove the iron, we bubble air through the solution. This oxidizes the iron, turning it into an orange, slimy sludge which is typically what we find in the polluted streams of Southeast Ohio. Now that all of the dissolved iron has precipitated, we can then separate it from the water by settling. By letting the water sit still, the solid particles settle, and you have clean treated water on the top and concentrated iron precipitate on the bottom. The clean water can be returned to the stream where it will no longer cause harm while the concentrated iron on the bottom can be collected and processed into pigment through a series of dewatering and drying steps. At this point, we've taken the orange pollution from the stream and converted it into a valuable pigment. This dried pigment from toxic coal sludge is then ground with linseed oil and a glass molar to create artist grade oil paint or mixed with acrylic polymers and resins to make water-based paints. My chroma series of paintings start with a composite aluminum panel that's held steady and leveled completely flat on a steel jig. I add more and more pigment and water until right before the mass will break the surface tension. And if that surface tension breaks, the whole thing will burst, so I often use an eyedropper towards the end, sweating over each and every drop. When that delicate balancing act is complete, I cover the whole thing to keep dust and insects out, and then I let it dry for weeks until the liquid evaporates and the temporal, fluid image remains. The end results are unpredictable, and the materials and process allow for infinite variations and beautiful combinations. And in my work, I, I look for idiosyncratic connections between things, simultaneous macro and micro events, the compression of time and distance, the glory of our universe, and natural and cosmological processes. And this is true for supplication, which are my large-scale series of paintings of global geological dynamics and complex related systems, as well as my chroma series, um, which are amorphous and strike a beautiful balance between controlled and organic processes that explore natural phenomena. And currently, all of my paintings use these toxic pigments in place of similar colors that I used to purchase from elsewhere. You know, I collaborate with many scientists and artists, and I've come to the conclusion that scientists and artists share two critical aspects, curiosity and failure. We are endlessly curious. We try new things, and we fail often, but our failures do not dampen our curiosity. And so the artist, like the scientist, has a crucial role to perform in our society to see things differently, to act on this vision, and to report the failures and successes to the public. In our case, my art reveals the potential beauty that can be derived from cleaning up toxic coal sludge. 
These pigments can be created on an industrial scale, and in the process, clean up the toxic pollution in hundreds of our streams and rivers. All because an artist and a scientist decided to think outside the norm and work around institutional walls. When citizens from traditionally separate fields come together to solve pressing problems, the toxic can become safe, the impossible becomes possible, and the ugly becomes beautiful.